Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky from your favorite real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today I pulled some strings, I called in some favors, and I am really, really excited to have back on the podcast, when he's not saving lives, he's actually flipping raw land, Jeff Axton in Boston, Massachusetts. That was, I'm sorry. I apologize. That was the worst <laughs> Boston accent ever. In Boston. 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 I don't know if I say Boston. Boston. Thank you. Jeff, how are you? <laughs> great, great. How are you doing, Mark? Good, good. I'm, you can't see, but I'm really red in the face after butchering <laughs> your, your accent there. I, I wanna, just want to do it justice. I got yeah. to practice it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I hope your wife No problems. No problems. She's, she's like, boy, what a jerk that, that lane geek is. She, she... <laughs> so oh, uh, yeah. what's, what's going on with you? Oh, just uh, not too much. Just uh, busy with the land. I um, sold a couple properties this week and mailed out a few letters. The lifestyle of the of the um, of this job, I guess, is great. So that's great. That's great. What do you What are you selling a lot of these days? Uh, I sold a couple five acre parcels uh, in Colorado, and then um, I sold one in Nevada. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm loving Colorado right now. I'm, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm loving Nevada. I'm loving Texas, uh, Arizona. I don't know how you feel about Arizona. Arizona's okay. It's just a little slower than uh, the normal. But I, I liked I like Arizona uh, in the winter time because it, you don't have all the the snow and, and it's a you know a little bit more demand in the winter. I think. Right, right. You doing anything yeah. in California? I haven't. Not yeah. not in a while. I yeah, I, I need I need to get back into California. I think it's uh, tough. It is, yeah. it is tough. California is tougher, isn't it? Yeah, they're getting the lists. I know from the counties, it takes a while. Uh, but it's, um, I mean, it can be well worth it. I just, I don't know California that well. Right. Yeah. All right. So Jeff and I are on, uh, we're in, the, Jeff is a platinum mastermind member. So we get on these weekly calls and then people who are in gold mastermind um, get to listen in on the calls. And then we have our Facebook, our private Facebook forum where people, come in and ask questions and it's a pretty it's a pretty lively discussion on a, on a weekly basis would you agree jeff yeah yeah it's great it's um you know just your base any questions you have you just post it up on facebook and they usually answered within a few hours either by me or mark or one of the students so yeah uh, yeah it's, it's like it's, it's like the room is smarter than any one person yeah and 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 i'm picking up different websites people post different things of you know, different websites to go to and things that I haven't heard of, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good little tool. It's great. It's great. So last week I posted on the face, on the uh, Facebook, uh, message board, you know, suggestions for next podcast subjects. So we got a bunch of, uh, responses. So I thought, you know, let's, let's just go through it a little bit. Sure. All right. So Adrian wants to know, what changes do you see in the land market and where you expect it'll go in the next five to 10 years? That's a tough question. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of fun because it's like those talking heads on CNBC. Like they literally have no idea. The stock's going to go up, down, and that, like, you know, buy Tesla. Right. Right, right. Uh, I know with the, I mean, with the land business, I know a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is I'm buying it and selling it pretty quickly. So you really can do it in, in any market. So uh, you're just buying it a lot lower than what it's worth and you're selling it for what it's worth and you make it a little bit in between. So it really doesn't matter if you're looking at flipping land, what the market is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I think that, I mean, I know since 2001, you know, I saw a very gradual real estate market, you know, increase. And then about, would you say 2006, we hit the peak? Yeah. 
So yeah, we, had, we had five, but yeah, I mean, it's usually a 10 year cycle, right? In real estate. Right. And, um, so I went through my first cycle and 2000, what, eight to 2011 was a little bit tougher, but mm. certainly profitable. I mean, I was able to still do it full time. Um, and I think, you know, I do have some competitors that did have to get out of the business during that time, but that's because they over leveraged. Did you know anybody that kind of fell out during, uh, the great recession? Yeah, a lot of my um at the time I was doing multifamily housing. Okay. And uh everybody who had and I was friends with a lot of a lot of people that had multifamily houses and collecting rent and everything's going well. They're buying and they're rehabbing, they're selling them, making all kinds of money. But there's a few that I knew that held held on to this property for a while. And once the once it crashed, rents kind of went down and vacancies went up and uh the values went way down, and they end up letting them all go, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know I started this land. I started right around 2008, 2009 with this land business. And so I, I started at the worst time probably you could start. You know you know what's funny about that, though, is you probably started the best time because well, you, you didn't have you – weren't, you weren't exposed to this huge run-up, so you had no expectations of, you know, like, like Duran and I were just – it was ridiculous, literally, like what we were making, um, and on a on a monthly basis, it was just like this is this is almost getting to the point. Like we knew there was a bubble, we just didn't know when it would burst, and I and we were both smart. Like we didn't over leverage, but it definitely hurt is from a lifestyle standpoint um, when it burst. But you didn't. But you didn't have to go through any of that. No, no. I and uh, what's nice about this business is that you can get in with. I mean, I, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars you can get into this business and get rolling. And, I, and that's, I started small. You know, I started just buying a lot, few lots here and there and seeing if it was going to actually work, and it did. And then uh, it's just the difference between then and now, things are selling quicker now rather than right. – then it was, it was still working, but it was – it would take maybe two months to sell, you know, or three months max. Rather than now, it, sell, it seems like it sells within a month is what – you know, or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely thirty days or less. I, I mean, last week, you know, just about everything I put up sold within a week. It was yeah. It was really fast, and um, and then you know, th then you got your upsell going on too. So I sold forty acres to uh, a minerals guy. You know, he just he lived he lives in Nevada, and he's uh, he just likes to invest in commodities, and he likes minerals and rocks so i said you know if you like this so much why not buy more he's like yeah what do you got so um it, it, that was it was a pretty good week for me definitely oh, in great. that respect and then a bunch of people paid off their notes so um you know so it's nice to get that that big cash influx for that week and then go forward and and then you know take down a bunch more property and uh and rinse and repeat so, yeah. you know, sometimes I, I get upset when they pay off their note because I like that monthly cash flow. And then other times I'm like, oh, great. Now, I'm, you know, I can, I can go on a big shopping spree. Right, right. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what's been going on. So, so you, I mean, yeah, so to answer the question, though, like next five, ten years, I, I don't know what, what, where the economy is going to go. I don't know where, you know, real estate is going to go. I know Duran thinks that the market is is going to go down. He he's not real positive on the macroeconomics of our economy. I and yeah. I have to ask him why. I, I just I don't think he likes our current administration. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I always try to I always try to cut him off on the podcast. I'm like Duran, no. It's not getting into politics. <laughs> no, we don't. You know, at the at the fire station, we don't talk about it either because you have guys on both sides. You know, it's like, all right, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that here. Yeah, I mean, would you say generally though, you think that the the economy is on the upswing? We've seen the worst of it, or do you think we could we could definitely have another you know big dip down? Well, I think uh, I think every area of the country is different. 
So um, depending on where you are, I, but I know, for instance, I have uh, a place down in Florida and uh, a condo I bought with two other guys, and we had bought it at the at the low end. I right. think we paid low low one hundreds for it, and it and it shot up to like three hundred or three fifty in the high end when it was you know two thousand four two thousand five. Right. And then it then after that it dipped right back down to probably a hundred or right what we paid for it. And it's like, oh, you got to be kidding me! Right. And now it's you know now it's creeping up again. So you're looking at like one forty one fifty. So and then around here in New England, same thing. It's so everything's just slowly creeping up. You know, that's what it just feels like right now. It doesn't feel like a, uh, everything's going to burst. I think the prices are good right now. Interest rates are still pretty good. So, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But right now, it's pretty steady. I like the land business right now. I, I love, love it right land. now. Yeah, I'm loving the land business right now. It's so yeah. fun right now. But it, it's always been fun. And and I think the reason is, you know, number one, it's it's an, it's an, it's a non-competitive niche. Would you agree? Oh yeah, there's nobody. There's yeah, there's so much land out there. It's in counties and little areas, and it's crazy. You know, there's there's no competition. Yeah, and 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 most people can't get their heads around it because it's always about housing, 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 and it's just this kind of unknown hidden gem that people, for whatever reason, I don't know if they're intimidated by it. I mean, you know. Figuring out land pricing is so much more difficult than housing, right? Yeah. And yet, we've kind of cracked that code. So we know how to buy it right, and we can flip it 70, 80, 90 cents on the dollar, give the, the, you know, the person on the other end a really good deal too, and, and everyone feels great about it. And that, that model has been sustainable since, for me since 2001. Yeah. Um, uh, I know people think I'm weird when I say I'm buying and selling land. People they, think I'm, I'm crazy. Yeah. They, like, same thing. Yeah. It's in, These are realtors. These are friends of mine. They they don't want to talk about it with me. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I start talking to them and then they're like, ah, Jeff, I don't know. You know, it, it doesn't sound right. It sounds like it's scam. Sounds like, what you know. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Pyramid scheme. I got that the other day. Someone said, uh, they're like, oh yeah, Jeff does pyramid schemes. I said, what? <laughs> I said, I buy and sell land. I go, well, how is that? I re- it's real estate. Oh well, yeah, I never heard of that, Jeff. Right, right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, what's uh, there's like that cliche. Um, we fear what we don't understand. Right. So they just don't understand it. Right. And um, which I think is great for us. Uh, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's. A little outside the box, you know, and, and that's what I love. I love real estate. So when I when I started doing this, I was like, oh, this is great. I go, this is just just what I needed. It's something a little bit outside the box, but it still involves real estate, and it doesn't cost much money to get into it, you know. And it's like, oh, this is the perfect model. Yeah, yeah. You know? Did you did you listen to the the podcast last week? Uh, prop. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so remember, he, he was like, I buy property in Louisiana. And like, right, and right. I was, and I was, and I was like Louisiana. I wouldn't go to Louisiana. It's like a foreign country. And he's like exactly, right. And so it really, he's like, that's where I want to go. Is I want to go to the places that are more difficult for the average person. They don't want to go there. He's like, that's where I pick up the best deals. And it's the same thing in our niche. That's true. That's and true. So yeah, I mean, it's it's that same kind of thing. Like oh, that something can't be right. You're buying raw land, pennies on the dollar. Uh, yeah. That's that's what we do, right? So let's kind of transition from uh, the land market, where I guess to answer Adrian's question, uh, it's kind of a moot point what happens in the five next five to ten years because there's always going to be deals, and as long as the economy doesn't completely collapse, there will always be someone else to buy a deal from you. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, making sure you're buying in the right spots, you know, make sure you. You're you're doing this land business not in the middle of New York City. You know you're doing it somewhere on the outskirts. You know the right places. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're you know? if you're competing against multi million dollar developers, right? Um, I hope you're a developer because you know you can certainly buy infill lots in New York, L.A., San Francisco, and 
you know, that that's what I would call, consider more a speculative type of investment, where you're sort of betting that what you're going to be able to develop will cash flow, and that project will work. And I, I think it's what eighty percent of developers go under. Yeah, about that. That's right here. Yeah, it's extremely risky to do. So, I mean, the property we're buying is, you know, either in the path of growth or on the outskirts of growth, and uh, you know, typically not what you would read about in Business Week. <laughs> oh, definitely not. No. no, or or even you know, some big co-star type national magazine where they talk yeah. about commercial real estate or or land or even you know productive farmland, ranches. It's it's that's just not this niche, right? Right. So yeah, yeah I mean, I you know, it's not for everybody, which is good. No, no. We don't want we don't want it to be for everybody. We don't want it to be like housing. No, no, never want to get like that. Not you know, too competitive. The you know, Florida is a little competitive sometimes. You know, but uh, you know, it's it's still doable. I buy there once in a while. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you can get a good deal in Florida, it's always great. Yeah. Um. And t- you know, Texas sells really well too. Have you noticed that? I haven't done anything in Texas yet. Oh, good. Stay out of Texas. I love, I love Texas. <laughs> it's Forget- big. For- yeah, it's exactly. Big. Forget I said that. <laughs> Just ignore Texas, Jeff. Yeah. So. All right. So then, uh, Adrian wanted to know about buying at tax sale auctions, how to prepare, what to be aware of, etc. What do you think? Uh, let's see. Tax sale auctions. Well, I'm just starting to get into these now because I most of my stuff I buy is through mailings. So um, tax sale auctions, I don't have a lot of uh, background in. But uh, just just like anything else, you do your due diligence first. Um, you're going to call the county, make sure there's no other liens on it. Uh, right. You're going to search search yourself. You're going to you know do everything to do with due diligence before you buy that property or put a bid on it. And then... Um, Go to the auction and get out there and, and bid on a few or have someone else go for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I don't go anymore simply because um, it's just not worth my time anymore unless it's a an absolutely huge auction and I know I'm going to be able to buy stuff and I just want to kind of get out and, and meet some other land sellers. But for the most part, what I'll do is I'll hire a local agent to go out and bid for me, give them limited power of attorney. We'll go over the list together. Uh, you know, we'll typically do our due diligence and and say, yeah, this is the most we can bid for these properties. And typically, you know, I'll I'll be able to pick up five to ten on any auction that way. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. You know, back in the day when there were fewer people doing this, I could buy fifty, a hundred properties or more, and uh, and that was fantastic. I yeah. think those days are gone. There's just too many people now. Going to the auction that, that you know the the days of uh, of being you know one of ten people in the room are over. Yeah, and uh, I've talked. I just talked to some, uh, one county the other day, and they said, "Oh yeah, we're starting. We're going to start. Uh, hey, this is in Colorado. We're going to start doing online auctions instead." And I said, "Oh, all right. Oh, well, that's that's not good." Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, bid for assets has a lot of online stuff. So I think it's so much better to. Uh, to do the letter writing campaign and get people before they go to the auction. Yeah. And you don't have to travel anywhere. You know, I, that's basically what, you know, this, I don't buy much land up here in new England once in a while, but, uh, you know, for me to travel all the time, it would just, it'd be, it wouldn't be worth it. You know, to, to, it's just so much cheaper to do mailings for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just tied two new employees, my, my son and daughter, by the way, for mailing letters. Oh, good. Good. How's that I gotta, going? I, oh, I took a picture. It was so funny. I have a little operation going. Oh, she you, does. You got to post does, that to, to Facebook in the uh, in the community. Oh, I should. All right, I will. Um, she does the letters, the addresses. He puts the uh, stamp and he puts it in the envelope and gives it a kiss. And how how old are they? <laughs> Nine and six. Nine and six. Okay. Yeah. So she hand, she's handwriting it. She hands write it. Yeah. And 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 I love it because the worse the handwriting. The better, because they're gonna open it. They're gonna be like, "What? What is this thing?" You know, they're gonna be like, "Who wrote this?" Jeff, this is genius. <laughs> this is pure genius. I've been way overpaying for my VA to yeah. do this when I have three children who can be doing be doing this the whole time for me. 
Yeah, and I um, twenty five cents per letter for them. It's pretty good. That's a good deal. Yeah, That's so you deal. you end up paying uh, you know about was it seventy four cents per letter at uh, and I was paying a service to do it for or eight, over eighty cents or eighty five, and so at least they get they have some money. You know, they get some cash in their pocket and right. And, um, and some responsibility. Happy. That's some good parenting there. Yeah, yeah, and they love it too. And they're like, and I, and I, you know, my wife with the other day, she's like, uh, "Oh, Jeff, um, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, I don't have cash to pay Amy. She, we'll pay him tomorrow." Tomorrow, I said, "Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll go I'll get it right now. <laughs> pay him immediately, you know, just like yeah. we do have VAs, and they love it. They love it. Yeah, I've, I've got to do that. Do they do it on the weekend for you? The weekends, I, I. I during the week, they're too busy. So weekends, I get my li- I get my list in order, and then um, I give it to them on you know Friday night, and they look forward to it, and they they make a little money, and you know I pay them right there. And oh my gosh, this is, you got yeah. you got to make like a YouTube video similar to like what Will Ferrell do with the landlord. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I so mean, um, that's awesome. That's really yeah. good. Uh, how much do you think they would charge me? Because <laughs> well, well, twenty five cents. Twenty five cents. Twenty five cents. That's it. All right. Well, will they take PayPal? Uh, yeah, we'll take PayPal. We'll take PayPal. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you might have a little cottage industry going <laughs> with, with with these kids. Um, but who else? Who else is doing that? Who else is sending out a, a kids written address? You know. No one's doing it except right. except for my family will be doing it now. And <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pit my three children against each other and see who can write the most, who can write it, you know, the neatest. I'll tell you, it adds up too. And you're like, wow, wait a minute. I'm, I'm counting them. I'm like, geez, I just paid you that much for, 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 a, for a young kid. It's a, you know, it's a lot. They can, you know, put 10, 20 bucks in their pocket for a little while, for a night or so to, to draw letters up, your addresses, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, every weekend I'll have my, not every weekend, but like every year, we'll, I'll have my kids do the property tax uh, math for me. So I get, you oh, know, really? I get a, these huge stacks from the county and I, I have them double, triple check it and, and do the math. I'm like, so I just send one check. And, um, and they, they really enjoy that. Um, wow, that's a good idea. And doing that. And, you know, but I, you know, I, I, my kids are so busy. We we do chores on the weekends, they and they have activities on the weekends. And I never thought about having them do my letter writing campaigns, but I think they would love it. Yeah, the, they they love the money. That's all you know. Because I it's funny. I put they put their little favorite shows on. They have the snacks, and then um, they just start writing. And they're and they're accurate. Like, do you check it? Yeah, I put um. I, I now I just switched it so I put my purchase and sale agreement. I put uh, the the whole address right on the agreement, so um, they they copy it instead of copying it from a list. I used to have a list they'd copy and then check it off. Now I just have them go. No, I you know I check them as I as they're doing them. I'm kind of around the room. I'm watching, but right. um, I guess if I stop getting accepted offers, that means they did it wrong, <laughs> right? <laughs> so. And it's been working, so uh, I'm hopefully it seems like they're all right. And I tell them anytime you you know you feel like you messed up, just stop. We'll figure it out. You know. Oh, it's great. That's great. So, now, now, next thing they're going to start doing your marketing for you. Oh, I'm definitely going to get them get them into it. You know, because this is gonna this is gonna be uh, their little part time job when they go to college and high school and everything else. You know, I've already actually we bought a lot together. All th- we we have uh, we bought a small lot together, a couple hundred dollars. Did and you, we're did selling you, it. Did you go see it? No, no, no. We bought it. We bought a uh, we bought a parcel, and uh, we're selling it now. We with the kids, right? And uh, showing them the whole process. So it's you know I want to teach them as well, so they can do this too. You know, right? Because they're always going to need money, whether you're in college or wherever you're going to, whether whatever career you decide to do. This is a great thing for a part-time job if you're not going to do it full-time oh yeah absolutely. so i want to make sure they know how to do it yeah i mean i i i agree and um i i you, know, you learn so much from doing this uh yeah this business because it's it's really a business it's not a um 
I don't know what's what's the word I'm looking for like a real estate strategy where you might fix and flip a house right which right. I would consider you could do that you know a one off here a one off there that's not really a business is it or unless you're doing it in volume this is a volume business right right um, yeah you're right it isn't yeah flipping houses unless you're doing you know a dozen a year is just a pro is just a fun little side business project. It's not even a yeah, it is. It's different. You know? Uh, yeah, it's different. Yeah, this is this is a business. You have to you have to treat it like one or it gets or it gets just too crazy, especially when you're buying multiple lots. You know, you have multiple seller financing deals set up, you have cash deals coming through. So you Yeah, I mean it is definitely it can get busy. Yeah, yeah. You ha yeah, I mean you can do it easily, very easily. I mean you do it part time, but when you're doing it, though, you have to focus at it like it's a business. I think I think it's a big mistake to kind of take it, you know, to just kind of look at it casually because it will, because of the volume of it, it, it will kind of overwhelm you pretty quickly if you don't take it seriously. Would you agree? Oh yeah, you get. There's been few. There's been a few times where I've been overwhelmed, and uh, you know, offers coming that I haven't. You know, stacks of offers sitting on my desk that I haven't got back to. Seller financing people sending me money that I have to track. Uh, you know, hiring VAs is definitely going to be one of the first things you do Yeah, in this business. You, you need them. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, all right. Um, you know, but as far as buying the tax sale, uh, I, I typically do think that you should you should definitely go. Um, especially your favorite counties, like I wouldn't ignore them either, but either if you can't go have a representative go and at least n know what you're missing as opposed to just missing it. So yeah. I, I know you, I know you haven't been doing the tax sale circuit at all, but I think once you start doing it, you'll, you'll enjoy it. And Duran for a long time, that was his main way of getting, uh, property. It was just tax sales. Oh, no kidding. So, um, but you know, if you've got cash, and you've got big cash, you have a huge. It's like poker. You have a huge advantage at the auction, as opposed to somebody that, you know, is is looking for two or three properties, and uh, they'll get outbid real quick, or they'll, they'll they'll spend all their money real quick. So, it's it's a it's a different animal. But yeah. overall, uh, I think it's a very good way to go. In combination with the letter writing. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's the, well, the nice thing about the tax sales. It's once you buy it, you have it. You don't have to worry about the mailings. You know, it's just a, a lot easier. <laughs> you don't have to deal with the. You know, you've already done your due diligence, and just easier, I would say, at the tax sale, sale auction. Right. But like I said, it. Uh, you have to make it worth worth your while. You know, go to a go to a big one. You know, if you're gonna go, get some money and go to a big one. Yeah, don't go to. You one don't want to be buying properties. Absolutely right. Yeah, I agree. All right, I just registered on GoDaddy.com, uh, Jeff'sOffers.com. So, Jeff'sOffers.com. Yeah, because then you, they can go in and they can register for your children to write up their <laughs> offers. I and, like it. Uh, I and I just pulled off the kids' pictures. Uh, I've got your your son in in the ski gear. Jeez, look at that! So yeah. I'm look, Jeff. I don't mess around. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, That's I'll a have, future like, Olympian right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can get his autograph too for like an extra buck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll be worth a lot of money one day. Yeah, he stuffs the envelope, so yeah, he's perfect. the one who stuffs them. <laughs> All right, so we're at that time of the podcast. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh wait, oh what boy, okay. Is your tip of the week? Oh boy. Um, well, you're, yeah. <laughs> you always do this. I, I, I should have been prepared you, you for it. You know I'm going to do it. Um, let's see here. Oh, I, I know everyone has this website. I'm sure they do. Is um, <clears throat> I can do a, do a few, I guess. But let's see. Carbonite.com. Make sure you either if it's Carbonite.com or any backup system, make sure you do that when you get into this land business. Uh, I had a friend of mine who just kind of took this business, you know, just nonchalantly, and then next thing you know, he's started to get busy, and 
and he had a 10 or 20 seller financing deals. He lost everything and uh, his computer crashed. And Whoa. so he had to start over and it was a mess. So I would say carbonite.com. I mean, everyone knows that. Yeah, back up, back up, back up. I, u- I use mosey.com, um, but that's more, I think, more Mac related. Yeah. But, okay, that, that's a good one, Carbonite. You got, you got um, another one? Let's see. <clears throat> we all do DocuSign. Everyone knows that. Right. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to. Th- uh, how about uh, Faststone Capture? Have I ever said that one yet? Have I said that? What, what is it? Faststone Capture. Fast? No, let me check this out. Maybe I hit. It's, um, I bought it off of CNET.com, and it just captures your screen. I, I don't know if I've saved that one or you not. Know, I, you know, I think we talked about this in the Mastermind. Okay. We, well, we, we haven't talked about this in the uh, podcast. All right, yeah. So it's Fast Stone Capture, it's called. And I went to CNET.com, and you can download it there. I think it was 20 bucks, And uh, it'll capture your screen anywhere you want. So if you want to... Uh, Pictures from the county, if you want to save a picture, it'll say a plat map or something off of Google Earth. You want to zoom in and take a picture of it. You can use Fast Stone Capture, and that'll click, and you can crop it. You can add text. It's real easy and uh, cheap. So Fast Stone Capture. Oh, great. Great. All right. So uh, I love that. I'm going to – let's see. What, what's my tip of the day going to be? Um let me think. I was going to say, you know, Jeff's children for letter writing. <laughs> but Dot com. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. But let's see here. You ever, you, you ever heard of, uh, I'm going to, I was going to do a, 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 a marketing one. And, um, have you ever heard of iJot? No. Okay. So iJot's kind of neat. Um, I'm not sure how uh how necessary it is but i think you know if you're if you're forward thinking and you want to you know you want to get that extra sort of special touch let's say with your customer your prospect whomever it be whoever it may be check out ijot.com and what it is it's video mail so instead of just them reading um your your email it's you speaking it in in a little video and uh so you send like these little video messages and you know there's other ways to do it you can do it on QuickTime, that's free but you know you can do this with your mobile device it makes it really easy um there are there is a free account so there's a pro and a pro plus account and you can check it out but i think it's worth mentioning so I, I've used video mails in the past, um, and they're kind of fun, and people enjoy getting them when I do do them, but I don't do them often. And uh, I usually just use QuickTime for myself with my webcam as opposed to iJot. But I figured this is a, uh, you know, a cross-platform solution. So check it out ijot.com will be my tip of the week. Are we good? Anything else? Yeah. Well, I'm looking it up. Is it I-J-O-T? It's E-Y-E-J-O-T.com. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry I looked up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check it uh, out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's that's pretty neat. Yeah. What do you definitely think? Definitely get a way to, yeah, definitely get a way to um, make it more personable. Yeah. Yeah. You so, um, you know, that or... Uh, jeffsoffers.com which jeffsoffers.com which <laughs> <laughs> which I'll have to pay big money for now which you're going to have to pay huge money for <laughs> so um, I'm not sure about child labor laws in Boston but let's, let's forget <laughs> about that get, for a second yeah, yeah. and uh, that's great so <laughs> Jeff I really appreciate you taking time from uh, saving other people's lives and uh, in your own land business to uh <laughs> To be on the podcast. All right. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. And uh, if you want to actually give Jeff a little love, check out his site, TammyLand.com. T-A-M-E-E Land.com. I'll have a link to it as well. If Jeff doesn't have any wholesale land that you're interested in, check out FrontierPropertiesUSA.com 
And of course, always feel free to download the Passive Income Blueprint at www.thelandgeek.com. Download the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Bang Mistakes. And of course, get the, uh, this podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. This is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with Jeff Axton with TamiLand.com. Jeff, thanks again. We'll see you guys All next right. week. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Land Geek.